<sighs> it's good to come together and uh, celebrate what we do have. And all the people said, um, "This is a the last third part of the little trilogy I was going on with." With um, um, the last one is uh, "Love Like an Ocean," and um, it's just when you look into the scriptures and you see and you read about how amazing God's love is toward us and um, how we can now love him. Um, Fred's talk was about the crucifixion and, and what a privilege it is to be called and to be chosen by God and what, what that sacrifice means to us. Um, Nathan's on Wednesday was about the power of God now that we do have that power within us and what and how awesome God is and how big God is. So I want to start in Isaiah 40. Making lots of noise here. Impact. Isaiah 40, and we pick it up in uh, just 12. What do we got here? It says, Who hath measured the waters in the hollow of his hand and meted out heaven with the span and compre comprehended the dust of the earth in its measure? And weighed the mountains in the scale and the hills in the balance. Now, we consider this earth to be quite amazing. And even our little Australia, it's, it's a vast land. When I look at that, that, that maps on, the, on your phone and you open it all up and you see how how tiny we are in little tiny Goulburn and then you just open it up and how Australia is, is a massive country. You try and walk around it and see how long it'll take you to walk around. And it talks about how the Lord measured, the, measured out the, the oceans and just how, how big is God. And he... Measured the heavens. Now, this is the whole universe in a span. What's a span? It's from fingertip to fingertip. How big is God? You know, we've got one little solar system in our galaxy, and there's trillions and trillions and trillions of galaxies, and the Lord just measures them out in a span? That, to me... How would he measure the oceans of this? Like we've got a million and something, a million and a little bit of Earths that fit into the sun in only our solar system. God is massive. And he can be really tiny and he can fit into our hearts. The oceans must be just a vapor in one little pore of his skin. <laughs> How big is God? Why does God always talk about how huge things he like, the mountains and, and all these things that he talks about how his love is for us, like the sand of the, of the whole earth? Why does he want to get into our minds how much of a deal it is for him to love us? It says that we are like... Nothing but a dirty rag in the bottom of a barrel. But yet he loved us even while we were sinners, even while we were absolute opposite to him, worth absolutely nothing. And yet he called us, pulled us close to him and gave us more love than, it can, than an ocean can hold more love than a span, the heavens. He considers us more than anything that he's created. What, a, what sort of a God is this? What a friend indeed. Why does God love us so much? 
you know, how big is the ocean? Well, it's the, all of the uh, all of the water on the Earth is about seventy one percent, and out of that seventy one percent, the whole surface of the Earth is seventy one percent liquid water, and out of that, the ocean is ninety six point five percent. Not much um, fresh water there, but yet it supplies what our need is. This is our God. This is what he does. He loves us so much he provides everything for us, and yet even, even then he gives us this wonderful and amazing <clears throat> supernatural gift that elates us, that lifts us on high, that provides for us, that heals us. We, can, we had prayer for the, all these people today because we have confidence in Jesus Christ and his power. What Nathan spoke about on Wednesday, this is our God. This is who we rely on. Let's have a look in Ephesians 3. Bookmarks here. Ephesians 3, 16. That he would grant you, according to his riches of his glory. Just wait a second there. He, what does it say there? That he would grant that he would give, that he would apply these things. It would let us have them. And what are they? According to the riches of his glory. How, glory, how much glory does God have? Moses couldn't even look upon him. He had to hide and see the hinder parts of him. And even then, when he went down to the children of Israel, they couldn't even look on his face. And these riches that God has, these things that we adore in, the, in this earth, like there's amazing things on this earth. You look at some of these natural programs. I turned it off. And um, all these amazing things God has made and we see and we, and we cherish. What more has he got in store for us when we go to this other place? You know, when we go to live forever with him. Grant us to his riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. When we receive this Holy Spirit, we become more, more than conquerors. Not just conquerors, more than conquerors, double conquerors that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye be being rooted and grounded in love. Sometimes we, I don't know, do we really understand or do we really, it's, it's about acceptance. Do we really accept that Jesus loves us with all, with everything he has? He loves us so much that he gave his only begotten son. That, you know, he now dwells inside of us and he, it's rooted and grounded in love. When you, when you really accept that, when you really say, yes, I am a son. I am related. I am a daughter. I am his. I belong to him. When you really accept that, when you really fathom it, when you really just take it on board, it's an amazing thing. Absolutely amazing. I was talking to Freddie on the way out to fishing and... um. We were saying, you know, how God is good, God, how God, how good is God's love? And um, it's like 
remember that guy who put his hand in the side of Jesus and put his finger into the holes of his hand? And he said, unless I touch and unless I feel these wounds, I will not believe. What was his name? Thomas. And what does the Bible say? Blessed are they that believe without seeing me. We haven't seen the Lord. We haven't put our fingers in his hands or our hands in his side. But yet we have that an amazing power that surges through our body that we know from the bowels of our being that God is real. When I've received the Holy Spirit back here in this room, totally amazing. It just blew me away. Absolutely just from my mind to my heart to everything about me. Just that realisation of knowing who God is. Absolutely amazing. Where are we up to? Ephesians 3, 16. Um, and to know the love of Christ which passeth. And this is what it's like. It passeth and it's beyond knowledge that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. How is that, brothers and sisters? The fullness of God, knowing, knowing that just eternal life is coming, knowing that you're a part of his plan, and like Freddie in his testimony, he was called. It wasn't him who, who was searched for the Lord. It never is us that search for the Lord. We think we are, but it's actually God. God called us on the cross. God called us then. And that calling is always out there. And calling and calling. And one day we go, right, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open my heart and I'm going to accept what, what's being told to me. And then do something about it. And whooshka, this power comes and fills us with the Holy Spirit. And we become sons and daughters of the living God. And it's just amazing. God will never leave us or forsake us. He promises that. There's only one thing that we can do, and that's us. We turn aside. We turn the other direction. God is always and still calls us even when we do that. Um. Now unto him that is able to ex, um, do exceedingly abundantly. We just heard that scripture before. It's an amazing scripture. Above all that, we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Now, we know that power that worketh, worketh in us. We know it's from Jesus Christ. We know it's supernatural. We know it created the universe and, and everything in it. So why do we sometimes think, oh, that's... Yeah, that won't work. That won't happen. <laughs> God is amazing and he can do anything and all the people said. We believe. We believe in what Jesus said. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus through all ages, world without end. Amen. God is God and he knows he's God. We have to start knowing that God is and he's all-powerful and he can do anything. What have I got written down here? Um, Ephesians 16, 20, down to 16 to 21. And what I've got up here is um, comprehend. I think that is a huge word in this, in 18, where it says, may be able to comprehend. We understand fully and know well with all saints what is the breadth and the length and the depth and the height and to know the love of Christ. We are to know, to understand, to comprehend, and that's what happens when we get filled with the Holy Spirit. Like when I read the Bible before, it was Oh, great. I love the stories. I love the parables. I love the stories. 
But until I got spirit filled, I didn't know the depth or height or, or the depth or breadth or anything of this book. And then when I got spirit filled, and it was just, it's the same with you guys, it's the same with everyone who receives the Holy Spirit, who loves the word of God, that it becomes alive, that we comprehend the love of Jesus Christ, the agape love, not like Paul where he says, yes, I love you, Lord. And he says, do you agape me? Yes, I affiliate you. Um, did I say Paul? Peter. Peter didn't know the agape love until he was spirit-filled and then he stood up. He didn't deny the Lord. He had the power that raised Christ from the dead dwelling in inside of him. And that same love, that same spirit dwells now in us and we comprehend the height, the depth, the length of Jesus' love. It's like love like an ocean. And the ocean is a massive thing. Have you ever been out in a boat and you can't see any land? It's amazing. It's amazing. You just can't see a thing. You just got, there's nothing but blue. And you think, oh, have I got the coordinates right to get back home? I hope so. Sharks. <laughs> there's sharks. There's everything out there. And this is the love of the Lord. It's huge like an ocean, but in actual fact, like I said before, it's nothing compared to the, the vast space of space of the universe. So having this love like an ocean, having this Holy Spirit, we get a glimpse through a dark, through glass darkly. It's amazing. Let's have a look in Colossians 3. Colossians 3.15. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. It's like I said before, really when you sit down in your quiet moment and you ponder and you think about and you experience the love of God, then this absolute peace comes flooding into your heart and you just have this peace of God that rules in your heart, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Well, Lisa and I were thinking about all the things that the Lord's done for us well, when we're having some prayer, and, and it is a huge part to be thankful to the Lord. You know, everyone likes to be thanked if they do something, but... <sighs> You know, what God has done for us, we've got to be thankful. And that's not the big stuff. That's just the little stuff too. Um, where are we? Three. Where did we start off in? 16? 15? I'm looking at the wrong one here. We start off in uh, 12, sorry. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved Bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man hath a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Sometimes it's um, yeah, when you're not when you're not think when you're not in that realm of where you are just worshipping the Lord sometimes, where you may be too busy working and all this other stuff and something happens and it's so easy to think, oh, my goodness, if I could only, you know, <laughs> that person's just done something wrong to me. It's so easy to think like that because we are made up of human flesh and blood and then instantly you think, what are you thinking? Jesus Christ. Like I was thinking even just the other day, like when you say that, when you, sometimes we do this and you think, oh, that person's done this and it's just so annoying. Oh, I would never do that. And then someone reminds you, well, you've done it heaps of times. You know, oh, okay. Sometimes when we accuse people of something, we're the worst at it anyway, you know? So forgiveness is a huge part of our life. 
the Lord in his in his kindness and forgiving nature forgave all of us our sins when we were we were born into sin we were sin and he's forgiven us praise God hallelujah um and then this is last scripture where it says and above all these things put on charity that's the love of the Lord that's the love of the Lord which is bound of perf perfectness and let the peace of God and so forth. Well, when I read that, um, and when we read all these things like, you know, we've got to be holy and we've got to, you know, be kindness and, and humility and, and meekness and long-suffering and forbearing, and how can we do all those things when we're just human? Well, you've got to put them all together. But there's got to be something in the middle that holds them together. Otherwise, they slip everywhere like lino or something, don't they? So what's the bond it says here? Um, and above all these things, put on the glue, which is the bond of perfectness. What's the glue? Charity, love. When I was out working, one of the most things I use is is um, laminated timber. Laminated timber comes this way, and the fibers go that way, and then there's got the other one goes the crossways, so it's like the cross crossover, and in the middle they've got this really dark black glue, and it blunts all your sores, and it's it just it's horrible stuff, but it is the best stuff. And it holds all this timber together, laminated, all laminated. And you can bend it and it won't even break. You can cut it. You can sand it. You can do anything you like with it. But it doesn't come to apart except when it gets wet. And then it just falls to bits. The sun and the wind and the rain wreck it. And that's like the devil. Don't put your laminated board in the rain and the wind. That's the devil. But the glue is the love. That's Jesus Christ. And when we all together put all those things together, you can do all these things. You can achieve all these things through forgiveness, through Jesus' love, through charity. And then it goes on. And we'll go to 15 to 17. And let the peace of God rule in your heart to the which... Also, you are called in one body and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Read the word and soak it in. I want you guys to pray for me so that I may read more of the word because it's such a blessing. Teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. Our Lord loves us. We are loved, and so we must love each other. You know, um, we need to have a list of all the fellowship people, and then we need to, have we invited these around for a cup of tea or an afternoon tea or at home or, you know, start ticking them off. We get so busy, we get so enthralled in our life that we forget about what we're supposed to be doing, what our job really is. We've been employed by Jesus Christ to be a helper. He came and gave every single thing. Like he was, he couldn't even sleep or eat sometimes. They, his disciples went to get some food and he comes back and he's preaching to this lady from Samaria. And they say, oh, we've got your food here. And he goes, i got food you know not of, mate. It keeps me going. We've got to be, we've got to start being like Jesus and start thinking about what we need to be doing, reading this, reading this beautiful book, absorbing, absorbing this book into our lives 
start thinking about our brothers and sisters and the people outside and what we can do for them because it is so powerful this this power within us unharness it, unharness it. let it go let's have a look in first corinthians first corinthians 13 <clears throat> In um, verse 3. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burnt and have no love, it profiteth me nothing. Love suffers long and is kind. Love envieth, envieth not. Love vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, Hope all things, endures all things. Love never faileth, but whether there be prophecy, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. These things that we are doing now is all going to stop when the Lord comes back, but we are to go ahead with them as before the Lord comes back. That doesn't mean tongues is going to stop now. It means when the Lord comes back, who is perfect? So we need to keep on doing these things. You know, when I read all those things out, what love's supposed to do, sometimes it's so hard to fulfill all of that. But when we are topped up in the spirit, it is easy. His burden is um, light and his yoke is easy. And when we're on, on our game, it's an easy thing to do. But when we're not, it's really, really hard. And that is the battle between the flesh and the spirit. Build up the spirit with your most holy faith every day. Let's have a look in Romans. Romans 8. I've just got this, this scripture. This, uh, we've read this scripture over and over again, and it's just an, an amazing scripture that applies to each and every one of us. Romans 8.35. Who shall ever separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? Just as it is written and forever remains written. For your sake, we are put to death all day long. We are re regarded as sheep for the slaughter. Yet, in all these things, we are more than conquerors and gain an overwhelming victory through him who loved us so much that he died for us. For I am convinced and continue to be convinced beyond any doubt that neither death nor life nor angel, nor principalities, nor things present, nor threatenings, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the ultimate love of God, which is in Jesus Christ our Lord. 
like I said in the beginning, there's only one thing that can separate us from God, and that is ourselves. We can let things come in. We can be like those little seeds that are put in the ground. We can let the weeds come in. We can let the birds take us away. But we need to lift each other up and be supportive of each other. Come on, guys. Let's keep going. Link arms. Put your shield on. Get the sword out of the sheath. Start fighting. It's worth it. I want to be with the Lord. And all the people said. And you guys too. Last scripture. I just got written here um, where it says... 35, um, who shall separate us? And it's like a marriage. When you're married, that's it. I can't talk. But it's like Lisa and I now, we're like peas in a pod. We're always together. Amen? We're always together. We just want to be together. Except for this one spot when I was probably tormenting a bit too much. And Lisa said, would you mind going on a holiday this weekend by yourself? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hard to believe, but praise the Lord. We are, love being together and we want to be together with the Lord. Amen. A threefold call cannot easily be broken. Let's have a look in First John. First John 7, I think. First John chapter 4, verse 7. Chapter 4, verse. Behold, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifest the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Herein is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God is loved us, we ought also to love one another. You know, God's perfect and his love is perfect. We are imperfect and our love is imperfect. So we have to have the Holy Spirit so that we can struggle through this world and love each other as God loved us. Um, there's no other way to God. He's the door. There's no other person or ritual or tradition. There's nothing else. There's only one. There's only one way that we can have this love like an ocean, and that's through Jesus Christ. Amen.